What's up guys, welcome to today's episode where I'm doing two of my favorite things at the same time. The first one is fishing a river. The second one is fishing with people I like. And yes. Love this dude right here. We uh, spent some time together at a trade show uh, about a week ago. Mm -hmm. I got sick, did the, the scouting trip, mm -hmm. which we released a couple weeks, uh, a couple days ago. And honestly, we concocted this on a napkin watching some UFC fighting uh -huh. and here we are. So. This is the guy that you don't dare to have a good time because he's like, hey, uh, what time do you want me to be there? So yeah. how far was the drive? About four hours. About four hours. Yeah, yeah. And then we did some reconfiguring, jumped in the truck, drunk some coffee, told some stories that are definitely not ones we can put on the internet. No. All the way here, and now we're going to go uh, catch some fish. So what, what are you thinking right now? Dude, I, let me tell you something. I just told you guys this. Like, I'm, I'm so jacked. Like, I get, I get so jacked up about getting on a river. <laughs> like, it, like, does something to me. And like, yeah, just, you, you'll hear it in the video. Like I will, I will let noises out of my body today that normally don't come out because this excites me that much. And like, I'm that excited to be here. And I already told you, ADHD is bad today. So we gotta like get moving because I'm about to just come undone. I, I just, get it. So I'm I excited. like river fishing. I like fishing rivers. I've never fished before. I always say this, you'll never fish the same river twice even though yep. it is the same river. Yep. We were here last week, the water was high. It was super cold. It was a little bit stained today. It's clear. Yeah. It's a little slower and a little lower. So these fish should be hungry, man. Dude, let's, um, uh, let's get it. Let's go do let's it. Go do it. <laughs> you, you might want to even up your foot pedals too, because one's like set on midget oh, okay. and one's set on giant. Set on midget. Put that in your TV show and smoke it. Good one. Oh, he just popped off. Oh, bro. Huh? Like, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's weird, dude. That... Yeah, that's weird that fish came off, dude. He bit it good, too. That was a good fish. I don't know how he could. That's weird that he came off. That's weird. Little guys, man, they like to fight and they start to strap on the feedback, so it's cool so we can get some bigger ones. Hold on. Hold on. There he is. I got him. Dude, he's so sucked up to the bottom. Or was sitting on the bottom that when I boat flipped him, I boat flipped clay mud onto myself. That's hilarious. Like his little tail and his, I mean like he is sucked right up to the bottom. Here we go. Here we go. It's a spy. God dang, woo, 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 boys, come on now, hell, far, I mean him fuzzy, that was a good one too, I mean, what's the deal, why ain't they eat, gotta get it in the mouth, little ones wanna eat it, and big ones just keep on missing it, come here you, come here and stop it, stop it, stop it, oh, this is cool, got old crawdad in the back of his throat, that's cool. Check that out, guys. If you can see it. Chad, it's uh, brown and orange. Crawl, that is. Crawl, yep. All right, there's uh, the second one. I've missed two big ones and caught two little ones, so we catch them. That's all that matters. Gotta catch the little ones before you can catch the big ones. At least that's what I was told. I think Chad's holding out at me. I think he's. I think he's got some kind of secret over there. Not sure yet though. No, so I've missed two big ones. The first one that I missed was, I mean, it was like a big, big one. Um, and then I've caught two little ones, but you gotta catch the little ones to catch the big ones. And so we're gonna start thumbing through them here in a minute. And one of these big ones is actually gonna mess up and get the spinner baiting one in, in its mouth. And when it does, I'm gonna jack its face. And it's gonna be great. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna shut up and fish this little log thing in the water right here. Cause that's the thing that I've kind of been noticing is every time I kind of get around a rock or an isolated rock, there seems to be a fish on it. So maybe that's a thing. Maybe it's not. Oh, 
Oh, that was a giant. I saw that one. See? What, what's the deal with that? I mean, why are the big ones not getting it? I need a little trailer hook. Yeah, I'm about to throw one on there. And see, that was around, that was rock again. That's weird. I don't know. Maybe the rock's warming up. Hit it with your skin. Oh, oh like. How does that make it feel? You know how, like. You ever seen that, you know that, uh, you know that scene from Christmas Vacation where he does the full-blown freak out, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, uh, let's just put it this way. If that camera wasn't going right now, there would be a cloud of cuss words hanging over this river that may hang over this river for eternity. Well, that's one of the ones we're looking for. And uh, he got it how you want it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was great. Oh, that's awesome. That was fun. Look at a little fish. Look at the belly on that thing, man. They are eating. They're getting ready to spawn. That's fun. Beautiful fish. Thank you, sir. And he's got sores on him. He uh, he went to that wrong club. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the one down there on, right there on the county line. Well, we ain't got to the sweet spot of the river yet where we normally catch the bigger fish, but we're catching more fish uh, than we have on the previous trip. So the numbers are good. We do have a front coming in, which means the barometer's dropping, and. Uh, we got a little bit of rain in the forecast, but so far it's held off. But man, water's a little more clear, a little lower. Fish are a little congregated more towards the edges and holes. And uh... oh, dang, that's how to go with it. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm just holding out faith that uh, Alex will get all these misses out of the way before we get to the good part of the river. <laughs> because so far there's been a lot of oh. oh, oh. And then there's been some hand gestures to the fish and things like that, but um, that's why the first half is kind of like the warm up, you know? Ooh, ooh. Come on now. Do some shit like that. Come on out here and play with me. God dang, there he was. <laughs> that was awesome. That was badass right there. That's cool, that's a large head too. Heck yeah, that was fun. He missed it once, that was crazy. I watched that fish eat like right off this little like trash mat here. And then it, I pulled that spinnerbait through there and he hit it this way and missed it. And then when I threw it back in there, he come behind it and got it that way. That was awesome, that was a good little fish. Beautiful fish, a large head. That was cool. That was cool. Highly recommend 10 out of 10 would do it again. So, people ask me, Alex, why do you suck with forward facing sonar? Well, because I would rather do this as to eat most days of the week. And so, yeah, that's why I suck at forward facing sonar. Because I want to come in a river with that ugly man and uh throw a spinnerbait for big spotted bass and and large mouse and and small mouse and and have fun and not be out looking at dots now if you like looking at dots i mean there's nothing wrong with that but personally i like uh jack in their face with a old spinner bug <laughs> that's another large mouth that's crazy Yeah, a whole nother large head. So if you want to know how to make a fish look bigger, you gotta like that right there. He's pretty. Look at him biting me, look at him biting me. Look at him, look at him, look at him. 
<laughs> I love that. I love it so much. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. That is so much fun. Say that about 10 more times. Here we go. First fish on the old spinner bait today. Thing has got a gut on it, son. Pretty fish. There he is. That's him. That's him. That's a big old spot. Uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> That'll do right there, pig. <laughs> he said, all that. Oh, uh, look at there. See, now that's how you want him to eat it. That's normally what that old power blade does to him, too, because it's got that real deep throated hook on it. But what I started doing was throwing a few pauses in that thing, because sometimes, no matter how big the hook is, you just got to throw some pauses in it. I mean, that dude right there, well, he probably weighs three and a half pounds, and he's about you know 16 funny, inches long. God, that's a beautiful fish, man. That's awesome. I mean, chungus, boys and girls. Look at the belly on that thing. That is absolutely ridiculous. That's just an absolutely beautiful fish. These things are munching a spinnerbait. They're pre-spawn. They're ready to go. I mean, this is just, I love tangling with river spots. It's my absolute favorite thing in the world. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love that so much. So much fun. Over here making movie magic, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, the, the cameraman doesn't get enough love. We got Austin behind the camera. He's making me look pretty, which is a, a very hard task to do. And, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm going to keep throwing a spinnerbait because, um, like I said earlier, I'd rather catch him on a spinnerbait in a river as to eat some days. So, that's what we're going to keep on doing. So, let me show you what I'm throwing real quick. This is a Berkeley Power Blade spinnerbait. It's actually a new bait a couple years ago, and they designed like a whole line of spinner baits. It was really cool. I mean, all kinds of different blade configurations, sizes. We came up with a finesse version and a regular version. I'm throwing the regular version today. And what's really cool about this spinner bait is actually this hook. And so it's got a really deep throated hook, and it's actually designed to be a lot longer shank so that technically you don't have to run a, um, a trailer hook if you don't want to and you know today we've missed a few but a lot of that just had to do with me fishing the you know power blade just a little too quick and so i'm just throwing that that's just in our our white there i got a gold blade with a little silver kicker blade both of them are willow and i absolutely love these things i mean they're tough they get bit i've caught a lot of fish on them made a little bit of money on them fishing some kayak tournaments and then i'm throwing that on a 68 stx by Edward garcia revo with some 17 pound trialine and this is actually a pro series rod. This is Adrian Avena, um, a really nice guy, buddy of mine, and he designed this spinnerbait rod. It's a 6.8 it's a medium heavy. It's kind of designed for close quarters. And I thought this was like the perfect rod and reel for today just because I knew we were going to be fishing in the river, close quarters kind of stuff. And so, yeah, that's my setup. We're cracking them pretty good. We're going to stay after it. Hopefully this wind doesn't blow us off the lake and we go on, or the river and we're going to keep catching some fish. This is the quality that we're looking for, these uh, 17 plus inch fish, man. Once they get about that size right there, they're the quintessential river fish. They just fight twice as hard as their size. They don't give up to the end and they're just mean, aggressive, and just gorgeous. We're getting into the best part of the river, the part where the big fish live. Uh, got a couple hours left in the float, but we're, we're lining up with the feeding time, the front, and the best part of the river are all coming together, and uh, I'm pretty pumped. So from here on out, every cast counts, and uh, we're going to try to get that 20-plus inch Alabama River spot. <laughs> Detroit. This is the Detroit River. No, but close. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Mm. Bro. <laughs> oh. God, that was a big one, bro. Catch Dude. that fish. That was a big one. 
That was a big one. I Go saw him. Stop recording. Oh that my. That was unreal. Well, that's a 20 plus for sure. We're 100% that was a 20. Real though. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. That fish did the same thing. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Look at the build on that one there, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That'll do, pig. You put an Alabama jersey on that, looks like any Saturday in the wintertime, <laughs> son. Oh, uh, roll tide, son. Roll, roll damn tide. tide. <laughs> All right, let's get that guy back in the water. Get another one. Oh man, I just missed an absolute giant right before that fish. What happened was, is I threw up by this target. And when I thought I was clear of the target, I started speeding the bait up. And just as it breached the surface, this fish come up and demolished it. So I'm gonna take my own advice and fish the lure all the way back to the boat. Now that something ought to be different and it just ain't. <laughs> I don't know if it's a 19, but it's a decent one. Oh, hell, he ain't that big. He's a little one. He's a little one. This will be fun. Chad, anything to look at on this one? No. No? Okay. Stay to the V to the right. That's it. All right. You heard the man, ladies and gentlemen. Stay to the V to the right. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from northern Alabama on a river in the middle of the woods with Mr. Chad Hoover, who just flipped his kayak violently and fell out. He lost several things, broke several things, and we're going to check in with Chad and see what he has to say about his experience out on the river today. Mr. Chad, how are you? <laughs> I've been better. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I've been worse, mm -hmm. but I've been better. Yeah, there was a rock. Luckily, I put my buddy, who's less river, you know, less river experience, with less river experience. I do not condone that statement. Thank you very much. Uh, in the better boat, and so I decided to take the, the. The lesser boat, not that it's the boat's fault, but I went down a rapid and tried to, you know, hip check a rock and that rock said, I don't think so. And yeah, I was in the water and about, I would say the tape would show less than a second <laughs> and uh, lost a couple of uh, really high end reels, a couple of really high end rods, um, a Dakota lithium power box, which yeah. may be down the river somewhere because they float pretty well. And, uh, a big chunk of pride there's a big chunk of pride over there against the shore and uh it's cold uh i would say that if i had to strip down right now it'd be hard to prove i'm a man you know what i'm saying um but we still got two two miles of river left and uh, a lot of big hungry spot so i'm going to uh lick my wounds with um some hookup pullage with the two rods that i do have left <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Alexander Rude down here on the river in northern Alabama for WMK Channel 6 News. Thank you very much. WRVR. <laughs> WRVR Channel 6 News. Ridiculous. Uh, well. All right, let's do it. That happened. You got shotgun there? So do you have any camera? No, I got my phone. So you said you lost everything and two GoPros? As I think the tunnel goes up, it's kind of like when I, when my headquarters got broken into, every time I look for something new, I'm like, yeah. the total just went up. Well, two GoPros, that's 400 a piece. So that's eight. I don't know how much a Dakota Lithium power box is. I'm gonna guess. 100. $150, $200. Uh, two metaniums. One metanium. One, one crown art. So. <coughs> yeah, that's a little expensive in itself. Um, two specialty yak rods. Pro series. A tourney tag that I unfortunately couldn't grab. It's down there somewhere. We'll find it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Enough of this sad stuff. Time to get mic. 
a, 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 a mic. You know, a high end Sennheiser mic. Yeah. So that's another four bills. So here's what we're going to do to fix this. Okay. We're going to go down here and the next spot that mouth punches a spinner bait, old Chad here is going to crack it so damn hard that it's going to wish that its mama never spawned it is what's going to happen. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And I'm going to do it too, just because I hate watching somebody flip because I've been there and I've done that. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shut up. He's going to shut up. He's going to shut up. We gonna go crack them. Anybody can catch a fish with a spinnerbait fits in their mouth easily. It takes skill, look at that. Where the hook is as big as his whole mouth. Killed that one. And he killed him. No, I didn't kill him. Look at look how dad's got gone cute he is. Get out of here. Stop recording. Oh my god. Austin, you got this one, right, buddy? Yep. I'm right here. Oh shit. Shit. That's a giant too, and he's got me hung up around that rock. Come on, come out of there. Come out of there. There we go. Start recording. Okay. Get in here. Yep. All right, that happened. I mean, dude, like I've always said, I can either talk about how good trialing is or I can wrap a big one up in a rock and pull them out of there and show you how good it is. That's a ball of freaking muscle right there. Look at that one. Heck yeah. Well, that's the longest one of the day. Definitely not the fattest one, but the longest one. Heck yeah. Sorry, bud. What just happened? We were going to film that beautiful fish, and he decided we weren't going to film him, and now he's gone. And so, there you go. That was awesome, though. That was a good bite. Uh, hopefully, Austin got all that, because what was funny is I turned off my cameras as soon as that fish bit. And, uh, yeah, so we got him We got him going, like, right there at the at the end of the, end of the catch. But, yeah, that dude, he wrapped me all the way up to about right there in that tree, so... We're going to get this thing retied and see if we can catch us another one like that before this little trip's over. And two and two is four, ladies and gentlemen. Two and two. Does he? Can you commentate on him? Absolutely. So, from what I can see, Chad has a good one. Um, I just dropped my paddle in the water, but that's okay. Is it big and Chad? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Old fatty right there. That's what I'm talking about. Spinnerbait's been the deal today, ladies and gentlemen. It really has. It's kind of funny. I started out this morning, got that big bite on that spinnerbait and ended up losing it. But then it kind of keyed us in. Anywhere that these bigger kind of boulder rock are in the water, these fish tend to want to be there. And we've kind of dialed in on that a little bit. I mean, there's been a few fish here and there that haven't been on that exact thing. Um, but for the most part, it's been fish on boulder rock. And uh, yeah, so we're going to keep doing that. I think... Chad just said we've got like a half mile left, maybe a little bit more than that. And so we're going to enjoy ourselves. Well, guys, had a great day on the river with great company. Donated a little bit of gear to the river. So I was rewarded with the uh, consolation prize of the biggest fish of the day for me, which was a 19, 19 and a quarter inch fish, healthy, a little over three pounds. Man, these fish are just gorgeous fish. Water's cold. They recover really nice. So we're going to get this girl back in the water. Go load our gear up and uh, live to fight another day. Bye, buddy. And I need a hot shower. <laughs> Final thoughts from you? I had fun. That was a good day. I mean, any chance I can get in a river in February and catch Alabama spotted bass, that's where I want to be. Because at home right now, <coughs> it's extremely cold. Water's like 40s at the house. And so it's amazing when you drive about four hours south how things can change very, very quickly. But thing is i had a good day today chad had a good day just with a little bit of a mishap but that's all right but i'm going to be back that's the most important thing i mean we were just sitting there talking we think about a month and this place is going to be like stupid on fire buzz baits yeah top waters all that yeah 
But man, I want to share a tip with you of something. I know you're wearing your uh, your rubber uh, church Can, boots tell me on about the river. It, I like but I want to I want to talk to you about this. I have tried everything, including the NRS boots that yeah. Austin's wearing. And until I found this situation that I'm about to show you, those are the best river boats e boots ever. Yeah. The things I don't like about them is they're not great traction on slick rocks. Uh -huh which is almost every rock in the south. Uh -huh. They color code the slick ones green, just so you guys know. If you Yankees decide to come down here and kind of visit <laughs> us, the green ones are slippery. Um, but the other thing that I don't like about those is you gotta get that neoprene up over your calf. And a lot of times in the wintertime, even though it's cold, the sun comes out. Mm -hmm. So your feet will absolutely bake in those things and they only make them in black. So I started looking for another alternative. And the first thing that I did is I got these seal skin socks here. And what's awesome about these seal skin socks is, is you can wear them without the boots and they keep your feet warm as crap. Mm. Even if they get wet, which is awesome, but you can pull them up to your knee and 99% of the time you're gonna be, you're gonna be dry. Mm -hmm. but like today when I went for a swim, that water gets in between there and they're like a fabric covered neoprene, mm -hmm. but they still breathe. So mm -hmm. your feet don't catch on fire. And then I paired them with these frog talk boots. And man, these boots have been the best boots that I've ever had for a couple of reasons. One, I hate having to pull a whole boot on like those mm -hmm. because your foot gets caught about halfway and then it's like fighting to get your foot the rest of the way down in them. And I hate side zippers. I've always hated side zippers. And so with these boots, they're really easy to go on with one hand, just like so, even on the river. And then they just zip right up the front and then you can wear these by themselves you can wear these by themselves you can wear these with crocs and so because of the fact that you oh and the other thing i don't like about those boots is if you're ever wearing waders with them and the waders have the gusset they're too tall so then you got to tuck all the waiter material in there and so with these these are short enough that you can still wear them with waders they're neoprene you can make the ankle tighter if you want to but it's all like clean and easy but it's a system. You can use it in early season. Mm -hmm. You can use it in the dead of winter. You can use it, you know, as like now when it's starting to warm up. And so I can go from the boot with the sock to the boot with no sock mm -hmm. to the sock with a croc to nothing but a croc to barefooted, which is kind of my system. So I've been struggling for years to figure out like the perfect river footwear. Mm -hmm. And so far, this is the best system I've ever come up with these old man looking knee high seal scan <laughs> deals and these are not compression these are just regular old over the calf socks and uh combine them with them boots and uh or just the socks or crocs man and they're perfect for the winter time hey, I dig it. yeah man no, I, I mean i'm always looking for a good pair of shoes but no i'll be back i'm gonna pull a terminator i'll be back and when i do come back it's going to be on like because i missed a few today i missed some good bites and so next time we come back through here they aren't uh they aren't going to be as lucky i'm not going to have as much mercy well and every fish that bites i'm putting into the kayak it was chad's fault though i was worried about him all day with them compression socks <laughs> on and falling in the water man here's the I, other thing this is nervous right now their strike zone's about that wide so they see the bait they come up they blow up at it we had them last year in the summertime yeah. you throw the bait and they blow up on it if you just yeah. keep they're just going to keep, keep blowing up keep until they get it yeah. and their strike zone is the width of the river mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so. anywho i had fun do you have fun yeah we still got 200 yards maybe we can get one more close us out road huh? just close us out with some kind of angle just yeah. like <laughs> catch, catch you on the next one gang gang no <laughs> We'll see y'all in the next one. Seriously, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, go to my channel, subscribe, Alex from Fishing. I'm prettier than Chad. That's the way that it is. Love you guys. See you later. I got one. Oh, there they are. Boom. Out of all the expensive stuff I lost, I got my Crocs. <laughs> That's good shit. I just didn't want to go home barefooted or wearing wet socks. No, I get it. Hey y'all listen, North Alabama really is a place where fishing dreams come true. From top-notch guides to diverse fisheries to breathtaking scenery, head down to North Alabama where you can reel in the adventure of a lifetime. And they're Discover unparalleled access 
to pristine waters loaded with everything from crappie to catfish to bass. So whether you're looking to load your cooler or catch a trophy, plan your next adventure by heading over to NorthAlabama.org. <laughs>